Hey, welcome back. So you're looking into CO2 laser cutters. In 2016, I thought I'd get into laser cutting. At the time, Glowforge was getting a lot of traction, so I placed an order and I waited. I even went to the Bay Area Maker Fair, and I saw one up close. Then a couple months later, there was a few setbacks with the campaign, meaning that delivery would be pushed back until the next year. After having my money for over 10 months, I figured it was time to get it back and start looking elsewhere. A friend of mine bought a K40 when I told him I was getting a Glowforge. But unlike the Glowforge, his showed up in a week. And in that 10 month span when I was waiting, he had already made a ton of things. So I thought to myself, what should I do with the extra 2200 bucks since the K40 is only 300 I had only planned to buy one machine, so I decided to buy a 3D printer and a CNC mill for the same price. Now in 2019 going on 2020, the barrier to entry for a lot of these things has gone down substantially. You can get a resin printer for 260 bucks and a Maslow CNC for about 500 any way you look at it, it's a better deal. Now after the Glowforge saw its success, I've noticed an influx of these luxury CO2 lasers, and it's basically just a really well-marketed, upgraded K40. I mean, Dremel, Muse, Glowforge, all these things are just selling you a 40, 45 watt tube, but for an extreme markup. I mean, for the same price as a basic model of one of these, you can get an 80 watt laser with a gigantic bed that can cut through a half inch of plywood in one pass. Now, I'm not saying that these companies aren't doing something good with their software or hardware combinations, but I don't know if it's justifiable for the price. Especially if you're marketing it as a hobby machine. I mean, starting at 2,500 bucks just to start a hobby is a little much. Some people say these cheap Chinese lasers aren't that great, but this little laser paid for itself and all the other machines combined. In fact, I've made over $15,000 with this laser, not including the payback of the initial investment, allowing me to buy tools for the shop and a 4 foot by 8 foot plasma cutter outright. That being said, when you do order a K40, there are some places you could actually see where they cut the costs. I'm going to be unboxing a new K40 here. The reason why I purchased a brand new K40 is because after three years of service on my last one, it gave up the ghost. Now you can replace the tubes, but a good one is about two thirds of the price of an actual brand new machine. So it might be more practical just to buy a new K40, because then it would be under warranty for about two years, so you should just cover your bases. When you get the box, it's really well packaged and it's moderately heavy, so you might need some help. All the components that you get are inside the machine when you open it, including exhaust fan, vent tube, USB key, a USB cable, and a water pump. What it doesn't supply you with is the water and whatever container you want to put the water in. And it has to be distilled water. If you put regular faucet water or non-distilled like mineral water or anything, it'll make the laser jump to all the impurities in the water, making it less efficient. Before you pour the water into the container, you should put the tubes in the pump and get it situated. We want this water to be as clean as possible. Now that's basically your stock K40. With a little bit more money, you can upgrade this into something that has comparable functionality to a Glowforge. First you're going to need lights, then an air assist. This could be a fan or a compressor. If you get the Cohesion 3D board, it'll open up so much more functionality for you because you can use the software called Lightburn. And with Lightburn, you can control things like a rotary attachment or a camera or the intensity of the laser. A lot of the things that people liked about the Glowforge and all these other luxury CO2 lasers, you'll be able to do with this board and that software. If you're curious about this, I'll link a video from Teaching Tech that'll go into greater detail about the Cohesion board and Lightburn. It also has a very good video buyer's guide, helping you pick the right laser. Here are a few examples of what you can cut and engrave.
This machine has allowed me to make mock-ups and prototypes extremely fast. If you're on the fence about one of these machines, I suggest you get one from a local buyer, even if it's for just a hobby. At the end of the day, the best deal is probably going to be the K40. I mean, if you think about it this way, you can get about eight of these for the same price as one of the premium ones. The fully upgraded K40, you're looking at somewhere around eight to nine hundred dollars, depending on your specific needs. Since these lasers are so accessible, the community behind them is very active. There are tons of people out there tinkering with these machines and figuring out new ways to make them better. I'll have a few more videos out shortly. Thanks for watching.